And let's start with roll call. Council President Wall. Here. Council Person Tresla. Here. Council Person Koss. Present. Council Person Bruder. Present. Council Person McNamara. Present. And Council Person Camera is excused for two nights. And now we will go to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, April 28th, council meeting minutes. Move to approve. Second. Second. All right, we have a second or three. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Extensions? All right, and... Jesse, I think we already have you. We are good to go on that. Is that correct? Is that sign the minutes? Yep. Yes, so I signed. We're good on yep. that. Um, and then I will get that to everyone tomorrow. Village reports. Chief Matt Dell, police. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, we all have a copy of my uh, police and chief's report. Uh, I don't have anything to add at this time. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Does anybody have any questions for Chief? No, ma'am. No. Okay. And the fiscal officer um, also, we didn't have too much going on tonight, so they did leave some of the financing reports. Um, they close, they are working on closing out everything, and as starting next month, they will email these to us. They will not print them, but um, they wanted everybody to have a hard copy. Uh, just so they could kind of take it, look at it, if they have any problems, questions, concerns, um, just email them and ask them any questions about that. But starting in May, we will have emailed copies. This will also get posted to the website shortly. Um, and then same thing with May, they will start getting on the website pretty promptly because we have somebody in-house that's going to be able to get that done. Um, Mike Flickinger's report is right here. All right, so this is our engineer report. Task order number 14, Westerville City School District Minerva Park School Plan Review. They've reviewed the school district's proposed plan for Farview Drive and coordinated and reviewed comments with the design professional. The school district intends to begin work on these improvements later this month, pending permits and weather. Task order number 18 is the 2021 storm sewer improvement project. The contractor intends to mobilize to the site on or about May 31st. <coughs> Currently, all materials are still scheduled to arrive on time. They will be meeting with the contractor next week to confirm site access, material storage locations, and perform other site-specific items. According to the contractor's current schedule, the project should take about a month to complete, once again, depending on weather. Task order number 20, the 2022 storm sewer improvement project. They completed their additional modelings, incorporating information west of Cleveland Avenue for sewers that tie into the village's storm sewer. They're preparing alternate memos for the village's use, which will include three options, with options of probable construction cost for each to address the stormwater concerns considered in this project. They intend to submit this memo on or about June 20th. Um, once I have that, I will forward it to everybody. Mm -hmm. Task order number 22 is the 2022 CCTV inspection analysis. They have received the pricing from Philo Line for the sanitary sewer and storm sewer cleaning and inspection program for 2022. They intend to follow up with Flow Line on the storm sewer pricing as it was considerably higher than was planned to determine how much work we can actually perform in 2022. Um, and as soon as we get that information, you guys will get the... Um, legislation so we can get those moving forward because I believe most of council wants to get those done this year. Yeah. Okay. So. I'd like to add one thing. Go for it. Just kind of, I mean, I can talk about it in the streets thing, but it's kind of easier here. Um, the task order, so the tw number 20, that has to do with the Jordan Road project. Um, so we kind of talked about doing like a staging of that just so we can get the ball rolling on that. So that is an option. I want everybody be, to be aware of that. that Hopefully we can get that started sooner than later. Maybe not the whole project, but at least the the most important part, just to you know do something. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and 
we did have, um, we talked with Mike Clinger in depth about that particular project. So hopefully we will get some more information out to you guys over the next couple weeks. But we did not forget about that and it is definitely on our radar. Yes. Just super quickly, do we think that piecemeal work like that would be more cost effective in the long run? I asked that question basically and it didn't seem to make a large difference, but we are conscious about that in our considerations. Perfect. Yes. So hopefully we'll have all three pieces um, again by June 20th. We should okay. be able to at least talk about it by the, I think our meeting is the week after that. So it's always better than that. Yeah. Well, and there's certain areas that are the most important things to start with, I guess. So um, if we can at least get moving on this. So there's that. Um, that was Mike Flickinger's report. So if anybody has any questions for our engineer, email me. Yeah. Um, Stacy's pretty good at emailing too. So. Any questions, just let us know. But those projects are up and running and well on our way. We are on top of them. And the streets project, he doesn't have that on here, but the yeah. street, um, they did get that pushed back a little bit. So the street yeah. analysis is being done as well. It is not done. And once we have that information, that will also be put on the website. Yeah, they had to delay that due to weather because they couldn't do it in, rain, in rainy weather because they couldn't assess some of the things that they wanted to. So they had to push that back a little bit. Yes. All right. Let's move to legal counsel, Jesse. Thank you. Uh, we are waiting one final signature from MI Homes uh, before closing tomorrow on the uh, public finance deal, so we're ahead of schedule. If it doesn't get signed tomorrow, it gets bumped to Monday. Not a major catastrophe by any means, doesn't cause any penalties or anything, so we're on, on schedule there. Uh, we continue to work with uh, Planning and Zoning Commission on the code rewrite. Uh, like I told the commission last week, it got a little jammed up with all that public finance stuff. So it, it went a little slower than I hoped in April, but we'll be moving along quickly now. Um, and that's all I had. Anybody have any questions for legal counsel? Uh, yes, yeah, since Council President, Council President Wolf got me all weirded out. Um, <laughs> our emails are all saved on a server, right? Me deleting them out of my mailbox does nothing. No, they're on the server. They're on the server. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it would be a very fact, poor. I don't believe yeah. anything. It would be very poor. <laughs> I delete junk mail. Yeah. I really do delete junk mail, but everything else, even though it's like a thousand emails, I don't delete those. But I do know that they are, in fact, well, on the yeah, server. Yeah. And, and actually, on that note, the um, most of your emails are cross copied. Yeah. So they're saved somewhere. And I think our public records retention schedule says that they can delete what they don't find to be administratively necessary. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. So I, you're, you're not in violation there. I get totally yeah. I like a tiny email awesome. box, so. <laughs> no, I don't like me too. Me too. When things are done, they're gone. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I wish I could make do sure that. I, I, have, I have this thing that I can't do that. Like, I can't delete. It just seems so permanent. Oh, I delete emails as soon as I get my involvement. I wish I could. I can't do it. This is all I want to do. Like, just No, they are on the server, so do not freak out. Yeah. I wasn't, but I just wanted to confirm that. You should have just messed with them. Oh, I don't. <laughs> just kidding. Okay. Um, village planning. Eric Fisher. Thank you, Mayor. Members of Council. Um, aside from our discussion on Saturday, I think I missed one item, which was that Jesse and I had talked about uh, a wider use of the. Um, we're doing research on the, was it DARPA? DORA. DORA, thank De you. Designated Outdoor Refreshment Area. Yes, and so we'll, we'll have we'll have more to talk about the next uh, board session. I think Jesse will be able to attend that one, so we'll yep. we'll have some more research for you on that point. Uh, two other items of note, um, every, the building went back up for bid um, on, it was yesterday, Wednesday officially, uh, six week period, and so that'll be due June 22nd for all opening bids at that point. So we we're in good shape there. I uh, heard there was already a, a interesting feedback, so people are interested and have some side conversations. I expect to have um, robust bidding this time, given our time frames and everything, which will be good. And then, of course, we've been, the schools moved along, the elementary schools, so as you know, you've received your invites, and that'll be a, a nice deal to uh, clap hand there with the school district folk on, on the night. That's all I have. Any questions? Oh, and on that, because you were reading the traffic and the, the traffic earlier about the improvements are going to far, like far, far me. Thank you. Um, and people may or may not know this. If you ever watched a real kid, you might know it. If you don't, you don't. Uh, next year, Hawthorne and Minerva France will be on at different start times. Minerva, I think good. Hawthorne will be half an hour later than Minerva France. 
and so half an hour later start and dismissal times. So there's not going to be two elementaries competing with the road. There'll be one elementary just like there is now, and then half an hour later, another elementary. That'll be helpful. That is yeah. great information. We're holding you to that. <laughs> oh, trust me, if I or the rest of the Federal Education Association could change that. That is awesome. That is I great change, but we can. Good, 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 good. <laughs> Well, I think a lot of people will be happy to hear that. All right, anything else? No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, zoning officer John Canty, his report is in the packet. So if everybody has a chance to look at it, if you haven't looked at it, look at it. If you have questions, problems, concerns, um, email John and or myself, and we will try to get you answers. Planning and zoning, Brian Wolf. Uh, I think between Jesse mentioning that we spent a lot of time going over the zoning code rewrite, uh, that was most of the last meeting, uh, so I just wanted to put the next meeting date out there, uh, looking at the calendar, I see one on the 18th, May 18th, but I don't think that's correct. No, I, I was I actually going to talk to Jesse about that the other day, we, we need to just adjust our calendars because I think technically it's supposed to be on June 1st, which I always hate the first Wednesday of the first day of the month causes issues because it's two weeks before the next council. Um, I I think we'll talk internally and see with the, the chair and see if we want to move that to the 8th. Right. We're supposed to have one at the front of the month. And I guess next okay. next meeting date to be determined. Yes. Okay, but we are, let's make that clear right now. So on May 18th, we are not having planning and zoning. Uh, no, May 18th, technically, uh, May 18th, no, we're, we're not. Okay. Only because she's looking at me, so yep. let's get it yep. taken off the calendar. Yep. Perfect. Um, thank you for that, because I even I didn't know that. MPCA, Councilperson Trustlock. Um, well, they have their new website up, um, getting used to that. They're planning all their summer event events. They are helping Diversity Week. Um, on May 28th, they're going to have a showing of the sand lot at 8 p.m. outside of the pool. Um, just to kind of kick off that Memorial Day weekend with us. Um, but yeah, they're excited. They have a lot of new events this summer and um, ready for warm weather. Yeah. So, I know the last couple days have been amazing. amazing. <coughs> Today was awesome. All right. Anything? We've actually, I've actually met with NPCA on a couple events, um, so that all seems to be going great. Super excited about all of that. Um, anybody have any questions? Okay. Village reports. Um, village committee reports. Communications. How's the person trust them? Okay, so with our email alert system um, that we were talking about, we pushed back our trial until the 23rd, so we're going to start that. That gives me and Barb time to sit down and really kind of hand it out. There's a lot going on with communications helping with diversity week right now. Um, we have a lot of stuff planned, so that's taking a lot of time. Um, so, in response to that, we have some videos done. We have a couple residents from different backgrounds that we have interviewed that we will have. We also have the coloring table, all the details of that being worked out for Arts in the Park. That's the way we're kind of kicking it off. Um, but then we'll have social media posting all during the week. Jason's not here, so I know that there's been like some changes, but I do know we're still doing the mural and, and the other stuff. So um, we're helping out a lot in that area. Chatting with council, we have decided June 16th, it will be one hour, um, and it's going to be introducing our council people, so if you guys have something planned, um, it don't have to be crazy, long, or, you know, snazzy, just, you know, tell a little bit about yourself, and then we're going to do the Q&A, I think that is the best way, open Q&A after, that way, you know, everybody gets a chance to speak. And um, you know it's going to be easier to keep the time. Yeah. So, I agree. That's all. Awesome. Yay! Anybody have any questions? Communications. Uh, finance. Council President Wolf. Yep. Uh, so we uh, big finance thing was, as again Jesse already mentioned, the uh, TIF revenue financing. Uh, it sounds like that is just waiting on one last signature for that to finally be enforced. Uh, next big thing is uh, tax budget. Uh, and I have had brief conversation with Jeff. We'll check about the strategy for getting those meetings done. Uh, we'll need to have a, a public hearing regarding that. 
and uh, at least one fire finance committee meeting to review that. But uh, we haven't had that scheduled yet. I need to get a hold of Mr. Wilczek. Right. So the basically the timeline, because of the way that our meetings are scheduled, <coughs> and just because of where they go, um, we will either need to um, read legislation without all of the proper documents to get the first reading in, which nobody is excited. Well, I will just tell you, he's not excited to do that. Or it would be to add a meeting so we have it ready to go um, because he's waiting for a number. For whatever whatever it is, he does not want to read legislation without the proper backing of it, like I sometimes I mean, do. I, I think a first, a first that's reading fine. of we will have a tax budget. Right. Is even though that document isn't fully prepared. That's that's his question. Is, is fine by me, Jesse. Okay. I mean, you're you're our legal counsel. If if the first reading is there is a tax budget, or there there will be a tax budget come time for, for final reading. What's your what's your thought? It would be on the second reading. He would have it by that. Yeah, and the third. You're just, you're reading those first ones by title. So that yeah, you, you're really learning that it's happening and people have the chance to come in and talk. I think it's probably fine. And you're having yeah. the meeting. Yeah, and you're having the right. meeting. And there, there's a public hearing. In the public so hearing. I think it's fine. To, Perfect. I think that's what he's going to ask you. That's yeah. that's, I'm pretty certain that's oh, really, know. if you guys are okay with that. Yeah. I, first first reading should be next, yeah. next meeting. Perfect. Um, so we'll talk about that. All right. Any questions for Council President Wolf? Okay. Um, Council person coughs. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of go off of what Mike Flippinger's report said. Basically, we met on uh, April 28th. I took some notes. So basically, after two days later, he came back and said that the um, the flow models finally came back. We still have to stick with the 36-inch pipe based on everything kind of going on. And then we're basically what we're working on with that is Jordan Road, the Jordan Road project. Um, and we're kind of working on whether what would be most effective in doing this in a, a timely manner and a cost-effective manner. Um, so we're trying to kind of come up with all of our options and then pick the best time-sensitive option for um, our residents. We are definitely still on top of that. Um, we have some preliminary numbers going, um, but we kind of have to still see uh, what else is going on. But we, at this point, we have three options. Do the whole thing. Um, with a 36 inch pipe do basically from what I understand kind of like a divot so it's going to be like an open pipe just to drain everything there or do a piecemeal just to really address one area that Mike Fluckinger feels is the most problematic area which is the one that we have the most um, difficulty accessing from a couple different standpoints but that really is kind of the the sewer that's giving us the most problem and maybe put our attention there and then maybe stage that and see what happens. Because he feels that if we fix that particular sewer first, maybe the other problems will um, alleviate themselves a little bit. Um, in regards to the East Shore Court project, they're going to start first. It was, I think this week the pipe is going to get delivered. They were going to start next week, but I think that got pushed back a little bit back to their original start date, which was... May 31st, so they're meeting all around this week, basically. But Mike already said that. Um, I'm just looking at my notes. What else? That's it. Full line still kind of... We're still thinking about that because prices did increase due to inflation. So we're talking about that. We're talking about ways to do some funding so the village can be cost-effective in terms of all of these projects. Well, that's all I got. That's all I got. Any questions? questions? Okay. Um, Jason is not here. However, um, maybe this is the best place for me to do this. As you guys are fully aware, a couple weeks ago we put some logos and things like that on the website. Um, tomorrow is the day I have to order anything and everything. So whether it be magnets, whether it be the koozies, and whether it be the sunglasses. We don't really need to vote, but here's where we're at. Um, and of course, I didn't print a one. Darn it. The actual logo, this one right here. That's the other one. Um, on the sunglasses, the two options were the Village of Minerva Park or soaking up, soaking up the sun, just like on the sides is kind of what we were talking about. Um, you guys did see those diagrams when we sent it to you. Mm -hmm. If we do both um, the Village of Minerva Park on one side and soaking in the sun or soaking, I think that's what it says, um, 
it's $70 more to do it on both sides. If we don't, it's $70 less. We are talking about ordering 100 of them, just as an FYI. Um, 100 is the minimum. 70 more than what? 70 price? total dollars more, and I knew you were going to ask that. Um, I can so if it's 70 more dollars on a $100 order, that's different no, than 70 more dollars. Huh? It is 70 total dollars more, and maybe it, maybe it, by the time we get to old business, new business, I don't know if you can check my emails, it says it on there. Um, $70 more. <laughs> I do. I thought I printed it, to be honest. 150 Which one is this? The price difference. Okay, I don't want to waste your guys' time doing all this. Because um, I did have I, I know I do. That was the money that was I mean, they're all in the two, three hundred range. I mean, okay. we're talking seventy dollars more of a couple hundred. Everything was about two, three hundred. Um, and then I do have the koozies because then we're gonna get to that here in two seconds. So the sunglasses, I think that was the number one thing that I just needed to know. Do you guys just want Village of Monroe Park? Do you want soaking in the sun? Or do you want both? That was probably my biggest question. I don't know if anybody I'd, has I'd, a preference. I'd go just Village of Monroe Park. Yeah, For $70, and we you don't need to prefer, put a cheesy statement yeah. on it. Is yeah. everybody, they want Village of Monroe Park and not... Now, if I can do soaking in the sun, Monroe Park, I'm just asking what you guys... That's the way you want. Okay, so <laughs> Village of Monroe Park. Can't well, I feel like if you guys. do something basic, you can use them for other things. Yeah. Okay, yeah. they'll jump in our park. Yeah. Okay, that's that. I'm pretty sure that's going to be in white. The glasses, I believe, are brown and green, if I'm not mistaken. But I did send that to you guys. You guys can see that. Mm -hmm. On the koozies, um, we kind of went back and forth on a couple different things. Number one, he had originally, his idea was do blue, um, and then obviously <coughs> blue koozies. And then it would be one of the different logos or even just the Village of Minerva Park logo. Um, and same thing with the magnets. So that's kind of where I'm at with what does anybody have an issue. I think the Minerva Park Pride one was one of the ones that people decided against. Um, mm -hmm. But between these three, just so I kind of have somewhere to go when I do this tomorrow. Um, the, the main questions I have for you guys is the two options are 150 and 150 of the koozies, you can do 150 white and 150, or I'm sorry, 150 green ones and 150 blue ones because 150 is the minimum. Mm -hmm. So follow me here. If you guys don't care about green versus blue, he originally said blue. I don't care. Of course, my first initial thought was green. Like that was green. only because of the mm -hmm. green. Yeah. Um, but again, for the pool, that's why we did blue. Uh -huh. So I do not want to step on Jason's toes because <laughs> Jason had thought blue. So then I thought, I asked her what the minimum was. It's 150 each, and I know I'm totally in the middle of a meeting doing this, but this is the only place I can do it. Um, so if everybody's okay, if you're ordering 300, the pricing is $289.16. And I don't know how, and that, that may have changed a little bit, FYI, because this was over two weeks ago, and we're now in May. So it could have changed a little bit, but it shouldn't have changed that much. So here's my question on that. Do you guys want to stick with the Village of Monroe Park logo? Do you guys prefer one of these three? Um, the logo does have to stay the same, whether we do white or whether we do blue and green. That logo has to stay the same. Is it a single color silk screen or is it a multicolor silk screen? It is a white. It is white. Okay. So it's just a single color silk screen. It is. So, yes, so it's then, the picture I sent you guys. Yeah. So then, this is the one that I think is. Can you the show best. Where we're going? I like no. the one. <laughs> I like the one with the little tree. I like the tree. So the tree is also fine. Uh, I, so I will tell you, we can't do this one because this one won't process in one color, right? Yeah, this one can't process in one color. So it has to be one of these two. Well, then let's get the one with the little tree. The one with the little tree. This one. Tree. And Chief, now if is. someone has a Monero Park Cruzy, you won't check to see what's in it. Wherever. <laughs> as long as you're not. Look at it. Look at it. I think once that door gets established, yeah. we'll be fine. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And then I believe the magnets are supposed to be this, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. I will clarify that with Jason. If Jason says they're going to be this also, I will stick with using these two logos. Yeah. This is going to be for Koozies, and I'm going to verify that Jason that Jason is good with that. Hopefully he has a chance to see this, but I'm sure he's way busier than... And then this is Magnets. I will verify that. Can you show me the Magnet one again? It's just... It's just... It's just, it's just, just oh, yeah, I like that yeah. one. So it's just... Yeah, I'll I'll that's that's that. <laughs> My other concern is the negative space in the tree. Okay. I suspect will be very hard to render probably I'll find a silk screen. So I'll see what she yeah. has on this. It's gonna look like a blob. 
Okay. And then you guys are okay with 150 and 150. What's up that? Flag. I didn't see that option. This one? Yeah. This is our old school. This is... Oh. Oh. It's the same thing that's on that flag and the flag that's on the front. Okay. I am done in that. I am now no longer That's our official flag. So let's move over to Councilperson McNamara for safety. All right. Madam Mayor, to the council community. Um, we had a safety meeting on the 5th of May where we discussed uh, largely the um, so questions over the location or the placement of a shelter house near the basketball courts. Uh, Chief Delp was very helpful in elucidating on the issues of past years and solutions um, that could be implemented to reduce any, um, or I guess uh, mitigate any issues going into the future with, um, I guess you'd say, antisocial behavior. Um, yeah. And uh, I can't speak for everybody, but I feel much more comfortable and confident going forward with that. Uh, we also discussed the preliminary stages of uh, legislation affecting the fireworks use in Minerva Park, which we've not come to a conclusion yet, but is starting. Um, and also, preliminary discussions were began on um, the OTV. With the public term for the um, dog, pick up after your dog kind of law or um, ordinance. So those are the three main things discussed. I'm sure there are all kinds of more fun and exciting videos for that last one, but yeah, there was. There was some great things. <laughs> all right. Does anybody have any questions for Councilperson McNamara on safety? All right, well, I would assume that the legislative committee is probably going to pick those up because if we want to start getting some readings in, um, we're going to mm -hmm. have to get the firework thing started ASAP or else they're going to be have their hands tied. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to be fun for the July weekend. So we don't have enough for all of the readings. That's a definite. Um, but again, this is just something that's been brought to light. Unfortunately, that does happen, um, that you have to do things a little quicker if you want to be if you want to get everything done. So we will talk about that. Um, if anybody has any problems, questions, concerns, or wants to start looking at what other communities are doing before the legislative committee meeting. We'll have some stuff ready for legislative. Yeah. So um, awesome. All right. Council person Brueger, legislation. OK, well, our last meeting was before our last council meeting. And mostly we discussed the, uh, the the TIF financing thing and, and how to present that. Um, the only uh, really exciting legislation we have coming up tonight, I'll just do a little preview of it, are two ordinances to potentially vacate some of the village easement back to private property owners. Um, and we'll talk about that more when I read it, I guess. And now apparently we're going to need to do fireworks and uh, Ooh, that's a good thing. Yeah, that's a good name. Um, and yeah, fireworks, if you guys get something, bring it. I was thinking of scheduling our next legislative meeting on Thursday, May 26th. That's for our next council. Um, and if something's brought, I mean, I don't, I don't consider myself anyway in charge of anything. It's just because I'm chair of the committee. If someone brings some legislation, we'll look at it and talk about it and move it forward or not. If it's you know, terrible, but... <laughs> and that's about all. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and Eric, are you going to have enough with that fireworks stuff that we want to do that meeting at six instead of six thirty? Uh, it, it's however you would like to do it. I would say six because we have the dog poo thing too, and it's the yeah. middle of summer, so I think you're going to have both. Okay, that's so we'll opinions. just do that. The May twenty sixth meeting at six. Okay. Make sure we have time to get it in. Everything in before yeah. for the meeting. Why did I use Bogger saying something like pet sanitation? <laughs> <laughs> that was very kind of you. Because you were you were being professional. And I'm not, so there you go. That's your answer. All right, mayor's report. Um, that would be me. 
Um, I just want to thank Jesse and Eric again for everything, getting all of the TIF stuff done. I know that was a lot, um, especially considering Eric has also been working with Ted quite a bit on um, getting the bid, you know, making sure that we get the bid documents back out and getting that advertised. I know everybody had a lot of work to do doing all of that. Um, and obviously, every, you guys all know I'm beyond excited earlier today. So there we go. Um, we have reached out to Mike Flickinger um, and their engineering team to get us um, a quote to engineer our links. So once we get all of that information, we will bring that to you guys as well. Um, I think the biggest thing that I'm going to say is you guys have all been super helpful getting all of this stuff done as well. Um, I think I, I, I want to get these things done. Yeah. Um, this is something that I know you guys are as excited as I am to actually have the means to be able to get these things done. Finally. Yeah. So I think it's it's super important that we don't you know that we focus on these. Get everything moving. We've already reached out. Eric reached out the very next day. Mike will get up get us that shortly. Yeah. Yeah. So as soon as we have that, the lakes will be moving. We already know the building thing is moving. Um, and then of course we'll be back to talking about pathways and all of that and planning and zoning. So um, those are some of the things that. Watch for it because it's kind of. Um, I'm sure I can talk about a lot of other things right now, but I'm not going to. Oh, yep, I have sure. a question slash comment. I spoke to Brady about planning and zoning in general, and he did express interest in kind of coming to a council meeting to kind of present um, what's going on with everything because we do have a lot of things in yes. kind of in the pipeline. Um, so I think that would be very beneficial to everybody mm -hmm. to kind of do like. First of all, I'm meeting and greeting to find out who this guy is. He checks out. He's my neighbor. I like him. Um, <laughs> but. Just in case you guys don't trust my judgment, I think he should come um, here and just kind of talk about everything. So he did expe express interest. He thought it would be worthwhile. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we need to do that sooner than later. Okay. Maybe we'll see. Uh, like the second meeting of the month would be awesome only because yeah. it's one of our shorter meetings. Yeah. So maybe we can see what he's doing in two weeks. Um, worst case, the end of the second one that we have in June would be awesome because, yeah, he brings a lot to planning and zoning. Yeah, and he had some great ideas about that door, too. So maybe we can kind of tie yes. all of that in there, too. Uh, uh, while, while we're on the topic of who's coming to meetings, um, our Representative uh, Lightbody, okay. her office has reached out a couple times. They were trying; she was trying to find a day to come, and so we were trying to direct her to the second meeting. So in June, she seemed okay. she'll probably come at seven o'clock, talk to council, have a little discussion, you know, meet and greet type thing. Um, however, I that was before I knew about the school. That's the first meeting uh, of the month. Yeah, I know. So I'm going to let her office know, and mm -hmm. she may come to the school thing as well, and then okay. come talk to you guys. Yeah, that'd be great. Awesome. Okay, so that's my report. If anybody has any questions, again, always feel free to email me. Any questions, problems, concerns. Citizen comments. County Benedetti, 2937 Barry Van Court. You know, I've been coming to council here talking about fences have been put up basically on Wildwood Road, or I think it's Road. Uh, I just got another call, or two calls from residents on Wildwood with concerns about fences that have been put up and I don't know if Jason brought this up at the work session because I at, you know, told him about it and was hoping that he'd look into it. But I'm going to say this again and again and again until somebody on council, because the mayor's, the mayor's not going to do anything. I, I explained this to you guys, okay? She's not going to do anything about the fences. The code reads that a fence needs to be 14 feet behind the adjacent front building line. Okay, that means the neighbor's house, 14 feet behind the neighbor's house on either side. If you look at the fences that have gone up on Minerva Lake Road that are probably two or three houses in from Cleveland Avenue, there's two of them that just went up, that are to the front of their neighbor's houses. Then I've been continually telling you about the fence at 2706 Wildwood, which goes into the neighbor's yard. You know, I, I pointed this out to Jason. I don't know if he went and looked at it. But guys, these fences are not up to code. It is so blatantly obvious. And I talked to our code enforcement officer about it. He just drove away from me. I'm talking to him in the middle of the street. Hey, introduce myself. He said, I can't talk about it. And just drove away. You know, the disrespect and the, the way you guys just ignore these the things that I'm bringing forth to you guys is ridiculous. You know, that, that, so what you really need to put on your legislative list 
is the fence code. Because, like I mentioned before, I don't understand where this 14 feet came from. Well, I know where it came from. A code enforcement officer came up with the fence code, and, and the council at the time said, sounds good to me. But nobody ever really thought it through. You know, so what really needs to happen is you need to take a look at the fence code. Because if you wait till planning and zoning, uh, you know, finally gets around to putting it together, because they're talking about putting it all together at one time and you're going to approve everything all at one time. By the time that happens, we're going to be through the summer in the fence building period. So again, guys, get off your butts and go look at the code and look at the fences that have been put up in violation of the code. It's, I mean, how you got, how the mayor doesn't understand this just blows me away, you know? So, uh, you know, and there's so many other things I, I'd like to talk about. You know, Jesse, did we get a number from MI to a reduced amount for paying them back? Did uh, they yeah. Come up? Yeah. What's that? I, I, I don't have it off the top of my head. I mean, it's like percentages of decimals. I don't have it off the top of my head, but it's closing tomorrow, so it'll all be public record. Okay. Well, you know, I'm going to start sending out emails. I sent one out today about the uh, tax budget that the five-year forecast on the village website is not up to date. And I've, been, and I've had to, you know, go back and forth with Barb here. You know, she's in the middle of it, doesn't know, you know, I guess how to ask the question. But the, the short answer or the short issue is that the five-year forecast on the website is not up to date. When are you going to do it? We, it was actually emailed to you. Are you done? Is that funny? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Um, just like it was emailed at the end. At the end of um, when we do the tax budget, it'll be up to date. It is not a. It's not a requirement that we need to re to update it once a month. It's not an update. It, it's something that Kim did for us a while ago. It will be updated. It will be updated after the tax budget. Jeff Wilczek will be doing it. Um, but it's not a document that we have to create once a month or once a week or anything like that. So we will get it up there. You don't have to provide any information to the or, residents. Or on it's, demand. Right? Or, yeah. Well, it's again, not you, we're not forced to create a document just because somebody wants to see right. something. So it's something that we do provide and we will provide once we have our 2023 tax budget meeting at the end of July. Then why didn't somebody say that? She did say that in the no, email she that said I read. That was told. Okay. Okay. Can I ask a question? I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm good. Tony, my question, I've had to ask this a couple times. You know, you speak and you're so passionate. Believe me, I get passion. Everybody knows that I get passion. <laughs> and I get passion a lot. Let's all be honest. My question is, is why aren't these neighbors coming and speaking for themselves? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I get that you have, you're coming from a great place. Um, but I think it's a great thing that we push interaction between our residents and our council and our village officials. So why, and I'm sure it would be easier on you. So I, I appreciate you taking that forth, but where are your neighbors? Where are they at and not okay. moving forward? You know, what I would say is that this, like you guys are representatives of the residents. It's that's not our required job. that they come up. Maybe they don't feel comfortable. Maybe that's but our it's job. not required that you come up for everybody either. Right. Our okay. job is to do all of that. Our job is to help. And we want to hear them. And, and I'm not saying that hearing it from them is any more than hearing it from you. I, I, if it's coming across that way, let me clarify. I don't mean it like that. With the exception that directly from them is directly from them. From someone else's hearsay. Like hearsay. Right. I mean, there is there is a point to that, you know, and I really think it would be amazing if we could take these issues and push higher attendance at our council meetings because that is what we're here for. It's hard to say Tony Benedetti has has a point and, and is has everybody's opinion. Let's hear from them as well. That's so I all guess I'm what saying. I'm taking away from this is that. The residents of the village, if you don't come up here to specifically point out your issues, they don't want to hear it. It doesn't exist. It's just like it's just like on Facebook. It's like it's, if a if a discussion happens on Facebook, it didn't happen. It's that like correct. No correct. one made that. That's also not true. We yeah. took every question yeah. about the TIF on Facebook and answered them in a public meeting. Yeah. So yeah. But how are we supposed to know there's a problem if nobody told told us there's a problem? That's my. I'm not a mind reader. Are you? You know what? Yeah. No. Okay. So, so are I, you expecting the same thing? You know what? I'm from sorry if you guys you? don't like the fact that, that I, that, you know, that people call me up. I had another person call me last night about the maintenance building. 
You know, people call me. I think me. it's amazing that they can confide in you and come to you. Because, because they, they know that you also But Tony, then why didn't you run for council? But you I'm need to for encourage mayor. them I'm to ready speak to run for, for mayor. themselves. It's you know, so I'm, I'm in this group here, you know, I've, I've been on this yeah. side of the table. All right, it, we're done. Well, right. we're done. Okay. Yeah, I can't wait for chat with council. Thanks for scheduling. It's Looking supposed out. to be a great yeah. friendly yeah. meet I'll your council get, people. You know what? I guarantee you there will be people out about the fence. About fences of that. So I hope we can do more than an hour. Okay. Um, again, we are in a meeting. So um, thank you for the information that you brought to us because once again, I've not received one. I've not, I personally haven't received one email, one problem, one question, or concern. So um, that doesn't get you anywhere. <laughs> it actually, I do respond to every single person that does email me, so or calls me. There will be plenty of people that would verify that. So I don't want to hear that comment. I do not want to hear another comment. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Legislation. First up, Ordinance 09 2022, an ordinance to make supplemental appropriations for the current expenses of the Village of Monroe Park for the year 2022. Our first one is 3,000. The <coughs> changes in this, we are adding $3,000. That is for the aforementioned koozies, sunglasses, stuff for the pool opening party. Um, the $5,500 for contractual services, I have to admit, I can't quite is it for recall. The pool? <laughs> I believe our memory about Yeah. And then finally, the 43000 that I was excited we're getting back, we're not. But that we, was just because we overdid it. We double, we double, uh, <laughs> double appropriated money for the Columbus firefighting uh, monies we owe them for firefighting, hydrant maintenance, and uh, uh, building inspection. That's the last thing. All right, this is the third reading, so I am going to move that we pass. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on that? All right. Councilperson Koss. Aye. Councilperson Chesta. Aye. Council President Wolf. Aye. Councilperson Bruger. Aye. And Councilperson McNamara. Aye. All right. Okay, now on to an interesting one. Ordinance 10 2022, an ordinance to vacate an unused easement held by the Village of Minerva Park over parcel number. 113-001042. Um, and this has a sister ordinance to it, ordinance 11 2022 that I'll read in a moment. Um, in between two houses located in the village, there is a rather large uh, easement that the village still controls. Right of way, sorry, thank you. Um, some of that actually goes through a pretty good chunk of one of the driveways. Well. It's a pretty good sized chunk of driveway, but it's a really big driveway, so it's not a big chunk of that driveway. But it'd be like half of mine. Um, none of that mattered. Anyway, we are considering, they are considering petitioning it uh, to re be returned to them. Uh, we talked about this Saturday, one of the things that we were sort of conditional on that from our work session was that we would want to retain enough that we could put a pathway through there if uh, that was ever decided to be something the village wants to do, as it would make access to the pool easier for many new residents. Uh, that's just the first reading. So unless anyone else has anything to say about it? The address? Uh, it's on Minerva Lake Road. Basically, it's straight across from, uh, straight across from Valley. Yeah, it's the, the right of way there. Straight across from where? Valley, Valley road. to get to the pool. Oh, okay. Yeah. We can hit off and it's on pool right away. Okay. Right okay. I didn't really yeah. care to say names, that's why I wasn't <laughs> saying names. Yes. Yeah. But um I mean it's in the packet. On Saturday, yeah. Eric, we'd ask for some stuff. Yes. In progress. So well, this was just Saturday. Okay. Um yeah. we I have to get with um Mike. <clears throat> We'll have to walk the site, make a determination uh, to give you folks some comfort as we discussed concerning uh, any pathway design from, from a preliminary standpoint. Um, I would think we will have a definitive answer for you by before you know by the next since the third reading is after the next work session. Yeah. Our target date is to go over all the stuff by that work session. Sounds good. So that, right. we'll we'll be amending those to include yeah. that. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. There's a couple corrections that have. Yeah. Have in there. Yeah. Um, and I will just mention in the, uh, for anyone who thought it really it is, in the actual ordinance here, it is, although I think within the exhibit A's probably you can see where it is, but in the actual ordinance it's just parcel numbers. Yep. Um, 
All right. right. Well, just other notes on that. This is one of those for councils. We didn't mention this in the work session. The the state law here allows. This is one of the few times that allows the, to give the village land to the adjacent owners directly, as is dictated by law. Versus generally, if you had a piece of land like a reserve and you want to get rid of it, you have to put it up for a general auction. There's a whole process that goes into that. So with right away, it gets it gets uh, vacated through the meets and bounds, and council moves it off. So just so the public understands, that's the reason it's split back to the adjacent property owners because state law dictates that that's what happens in this case. Okay. Um, if council finds that there is no future use for that specific portions that are getting vacated back, which will determine. Okay. And as I mentioned, this has a sister ordinance, Ordinance 11 2022, an ordinance to vacate unused easement held by the village of Murder Park over parcel number 113 001 042. Um, the reason there's two of them is because there are two houses involved and we would have to do both of them. Uh, I think we've already had a discussion. Anyone else have anything to say? Moving on to resolution 2022-14, a resolution submitting the question of a renewal tax levy for the purpose of providing for the current expenses of the general fund of the Village of Monroe Park to the Franklin County Board of Elections. So here we are, first reading of, and it is, hold on, let me go down here. It is a renewal levy. Renewal. A five mil renewal levy. And it would generate, or it currently generates, roughly $176,773.64. I know that sounds very specific for me saying currently about, this is the projection, I believe, of what it would generate in next year, or is this one of those where that is the locked in amount and it always is that much? That is, a, I believe, a projection from the auditor. So we had to request okay. the projection and then... So that is a projection. I know it's a, an exact amount, but it's an exact amount based on the auditor saying it should be this amount. Uh, somewhere in there. Um, this is our, yes? Well, yeah, finish okay. that. Uh, first reading of that. It looks like we're gonna, we got our stuff back from the county in time that we can yes. just do our 30 reading. And that is for people uh, listening or concerned, that's us actually just putting it on the ballot. Once, mm -hmm. If and when that passes, mm -hmm. it would then be on the November ballot. Correct. There was a typo, so the guy's name is Michael Fout, and the resolution number is 15. Ah, thank you. <coughs> yeah, I did. <didn't. coughs> um, actually, wait, is this one good? Yeah, mine's fine. Okay. Yeah, I don't have your janky papers. <laughs> I got good papers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up, resolution 2022-15, a resolution affirming the appointment of Michael Fout, is it Fout? Fout. Fout. As a full-time police officer for the village of Minerva Park and declaring an emergency. Uh, we're also looking to waive readings on this. I know that is always, why is it an emergency? Why is it a reading? Uh, in this case, it's, it's just for the orderly running of the village. I mean, we, we have an employee, we want to make him official. Uh, he's been hired. Has he been through his six months, I yes. take it, Chief Del? He will be on the third reading. Okay, well, I or have... The second, the second reading. Oh, I'm sorry, on the second reading. I'm sorry, we're just going to be... Re we uh, requested to waive the third. Mm -hmm. So that is the second reading, and it has been read. Let's end legislation. I already popped open. I'm ready to go. Sorry. <laughs> I lost. <laughs> I'm sorry. Old business is next. Okay. Old business. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? <clears throat> New business. Is that a move uh, to adjourn? Second. Second. Oh. Okay. You guys are all ready to All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? No, so at uh, uh, building, we did a this year. Uh, and, uh, hey, I have a question. Sure. I have lots of Our questions. Sure. So, the door. Sure. I'm very passionate about it. That is very good. Is that possible? So it's going to have to be created. Oh, okay. I need to look into it because I've, done, I've set up a bunch of
but all of the ones I've set up have had like establishments. So we're trying to figure out a way, and I have to look at how you can like, create a community improvement corporation that has a permit. Oh, 